We're excited to have Chris Baker and Robert Waywell with us today. I've known Chris for well over a decade and consider him one of the most knowledgeable people in the uh, Sybase database community. We hope you get real value out of these presentations. And on that note, I'm turning the presentation back over to our marketing director, John Avery. John? All right, Brad, thank you so much. So yes, as Brad mentioned, you know, we, uh, this is, will be the second of our third uh, ASC uh, webinar series. And again, we, I will give, give you a little short background with uh, uh, of who, of where we're gonna be doing our agenda. Again, our welcome and introductions. We will uh, have Chris Baker. Again, Chris, Chris Baker is a longtime former Sybase uh, product evangelist uh, with over two decades working in pre-sales, sales, and the center of excellence, developing the direction of ASC and rep server on-premise products. Uh, he's a frequent, you know, brilliant technical speaker uh, who's passionate about sharing his deep knowledge of SAP Sybase database management solutions. Accompanying Chris will be Robert Waywell, who has uh, developed, uh, who's been involved in all aspects of SAP Sybase IQ, including product management and development through implementation. Uh, after following uh, their sessions, we will have our own Ed Stangler, our lab manager and product uh, director of R&D. Uh, for Bradmark, who will highlight the essential monitoring of all three platforms and including our own product roadmap. Uh, this will, uh, the, we will have a Q&A session at the end. I'm sure that a lot of people will have uh, an extensive number of questions to be asked. Uh, feel free to uh, post those questions and we will uh, get to them, as many of them as possible at the tail end of our presentations. And if we don't get to those, we will definitely post those uh, questions uh, uh, to those individuals at a later time. Um, this webinar will be recorded and available later this week. Uh, if, you receive, if you wish to receive a digital copy of this presentation, uh, simply uh, reply on our follow-up emails uh, following this presentation and request uh, uh, the digital copy and we'll be we'll happy to get that over to you. So with that in mind, let's go out with a further ado. Let's move over to Chris uh, Baker. Uh, Chris, the platform is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening uh, to everybody, uh, wherever you are. Hope everybody is safe. So what I will be doing is for now, um, we're just going to quickly, uh, we're, we're going to cover as part of this session, um, the, uh, the roadmaps for ASE, uh, SAP Adaptive Server Enterprise, SAP Replication Server, and SAP IQ. So there will, there's a normal legal disclaimer. This is a roadmap presentation, which is subject to change. And we will be proceeding with uh, basically what has been published already with a couple of uh, uh, changes. In terms of roadmaps, what we'll be doing today is covering uh, the ASE roadmap overview um, as far as the, uh, you know, what is ASE, what it can do already, which many of you probably know, as well as uh, the replication server roadmap and the IQ roadmap. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Okay, there it is, okay. So first we'll cover ASE. Uh, many of you know it as a mission critical uh, uh, transaction processing engine, which uh, has been designed and works with extreme online transaction processing. Um, we have been around for many, many years and uh, with a huge footprint in financial services and uh, telco and, uh, and governments as well as a, a very large footprint in particular on places like Wall Street and uh, as I'm in Canada, Bay Street uh, and several of the major banks and corporations. The key capabilities of ASE are extreme transaction, online transaction processing. So we can support tens of thousands of transactions a second as full blown, you know, uh, commit, committed transactions. These may alter and uh, change several tables at once. In recent releases, we have introduced the ability to support what's called uh, always on or high availability disaster recovery clustering, where uh, we can vertically scale nodes and have a single node still work on the transactions and transparently fail over and fail the connections over 
in the event of a failure and it is uh, in, in the HA mode, it is considered a full hot standby with no transaction loss. It is paired as part of this under the covers with replication server, utilizing our replication server technology to provide synchronous um, transaction replication out of the source database into the companion server using the replication technology. We also support things like full native database encryption as well as column encryption, we've, uh, which has been around for uh, several years, but we also uh, introduced native full database encryption along with other security features such as auditing, role-based access controls, granular permissions, um, very, very, you know, um, various other th integration into things like Kerberos hardware security modules, um, as well as you know, encryption of the TDS packets uh, that are the uh, protocol used to communicate with an, an ASE from the clients. As well as I mentioned with the HADR, we support replication utilizing this SAP replication server technology, which is transactional based replication does not require triggers or store procedures or any form of uh, changes to your DDL. ASC has developed uh, to do things like uh, take care of low, low total cost of ownership. It works in virtualized environments and within uh, cloud deployments in an infrastructure as a service uh, uh, configuration. It is fully high speed and automated. Um, it, as we said, it works with multi-terabyte uh, uh, transactional databases. It's designed to be highly available and it can operate within the cloud and gives you things like extreme transaction volumes, uh, low latency of those transactions so you can get in and out and do many thousands of transactions a minute as well. Oops, sorry. Okay, also what we've been working on uh, in our most recent environments is things like um, Hang on a sec. Um, it's, it's things like um, uh, bring your own license to the cloud, as well as, hang on two seconds. Uh... Okay. Okay, so hang on a second. Ed, can you take control, please? I need to, we'll, I'll just uh, specify next slide and previous slide. So our John, um, can you uh, go back a couple of uh, slides, please? Okay, so stop here. All right, so um, what we've been developing in the past couple of years is things like uh, uh, increasing our capabilities for uh, trans extreme transaction processing functionality, so more use of in-memory technologies that we've uh, 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 that are part and parcel of SAP. Um, so we actually work with SAP in terms of engin uh, having engineers work together and have technologies make it into our various database platforms as well as we're working within our data centers so that we have high availability uh, capabilities. Our data centers uh, have high availability, but also when you deploy an ASC within an SAP cloud data center, we also support HADR within that environment already. We are enabling cloud capabilities and also engineering a new cloud native uh, capability within ASC as a service uh, uh, as well. And we are continuing to support uh, SAP's business suite as the underlying database of, of choice uh, outside of SAP HANA and S for HANA so that we can have customers, many customers run business suite on top of ASC as well as SAP's own HANA proper, uh, 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 server. Next slide, please. So going forward, we're committed to long-term maintenance and support of ASC. That is a statement that has been made by SAP corporate at the highest levels. So we are continuing to engineer ASC and add capabilities. As such, what we're gonna be doing is increasing the number of 16.0 patch releases for ASC and replication server. They are currently uh, released 
at the same time along with open server and the SDK so that within the same release cycle, they are all together. Because ASC is engineered with HADR and that uh, relies also on replication server, you will find the same major release number, service pack and patch level of all the components are released at the same time. We do not release you know, in off times. We release rep server ASC and and uh, the components uh, like open server and at the SDK all at the same time. So what we're going to be doing is we're planning uh, to increase the number of releases. So of the uh, ASC 16 SPO3 release as well at the end of this year, we're planning on releasing SPO4, which will be uh, completing some of the feature capabilities that require system changes for things like HADS, our support of XA transactions. So if you are using XA. Right now, ASC supports things like XA. We're going to go forward with making sure HADR, if that fraction of a second when things fail over and you're in the middle of an XA DR or XA transaction, it will continue to be completed by the companion server. Okay. As well, we're going to invest in further managed cloud services for ASC replication server and IQ. Next slide, please. In terms of what's coming up, um, we're definitely working on a lot of cloud development and deployment. We're working on on-premise ASE as well as the ability to move an on-premise ASE into our new ASE uh, HANA ASE service capabilities. So we're going to work. We're working on database migration tooling. We're working on uh, the ability to move data and replicate data from on-premise to the cloud, as well as the ability utilizing our capture, our, our workload analyzer capability to capture workloads. Right now, you can do this with, for example, migrating from ASC 15.7 to 16. You'll be able to capture workloads and play them back in a cloud environment to better tune that cloud environment. Because as you are aware, we don't have ownership of things like the low-level disk, like the raw devices that you may be using right now. So you may want to tune and change cache sizing and stuff like that to support what the cloud environment will provide you. As well, we're making ease of use of such features as MemScale, the uh, HADR always on capabilities and the workload analyzer and completing some of that feature completion to make sure that if there's things that are missing. So for example, workload analyzer has a record playback capability with a command line. We want to take that and ensure that that capability can also continue to work with things like generating the exporting the data so that you can generate your own graphs and stuff like that. So to ensure that you have that capability to continue to move forward, as well as adding, you know, cookbooks, uh, keep continuing to work on the documentation and making sure that it is uh, of the caliber that you would expect that you don't have to go looking for all the other pieces, but it's right there within the documentation or within uh, white papers or blogs. As well, we're always moving forward with query processing enhancements. Uh, you know, maybe they're based on customer issues. Maybe they're things we find ourselves. Maybe a customer wants something to operate a lot faster. So they're not just bug fixes, but enhancements that help reduce problems and make things simplified so that, you know, maybe we've simplified things like, you know, SP2 down, who down to SP underscore W, which gives you a much more compact version of the SP who output that was introduced in one of the most recent releases. Next slide, please. Back one, there we go. Okay, so what we've been doing lately is currently uh, this roadmap is published and available as a PDF on the roadmap site. It's updated a little bit because the current release of ASC, as you can see in the lower left corner, is ASC 16 SPO3 PLO8. And um, we are coming out with PLO9 this year, as well as SPO4. And going forward, we're going to have timely deliveries of the SPO3 and SPO4 code lines. Those of you on SPO2, don't worry. We just released SPLO9 as well about a month before PLO8. So you can actually do a migration from SPO3, SPO2, PLO9 to SPO3, PLO8 without missing any fixes. Okay, so we made that upgrade path possible to ensure that will continue. Going forward, 
SPO3 is the preferred service pack and uh, upcoming SPO4. If you're still on SPO3, don't worry. You know, the, as, as many of you are aware, there is an end of mainstream maintenance date of the end of 2025. That still doesn't mean that we won't bring out an SPO5 and an SPO6. So we still want to engineer innovation into ASE, okay? And uh, we're also considering an SB an ASE 16.1, just to let you know, okay? So right now, what we've recently added is things like, you know, hardware security modules for Windows, Linux, and HPOX, and actually Solaris in the SPO8 uh, release um, that should come from the product direction into the Solaris now. We've added, we've certified Red Hat Enterprise 8 and SUSE 15, and that's 8.x and SUSE 15.x at the SPO, PLO 7, SPO 3 PLO 7 release. So we actually certified this back pa this past August. Those certifications continue into the, the minor releases of those operating systems. So we have documentation in SAP on ODOT that can do that. I can provide that number through, uh, through at uh, if you're interested or if you're not aware that we do have a separate SAP note that talks about the certified operating systems that ASC supports through the various server PLs. Service Pack 2 or has that in documentation. Service Pack 3, it is in the SAP note. And we're going to go forward with that sort of certification as we do our various cloud certifications. So we're going to certify the operating systems and then the, oper the, the, the cloud vendors can run that operating system and you should be able to run that version of an ASC inside that supported uh, operating system in the cloud. We also have the ability to, as we said, run AWS. We provide AMIs at the current release level, which is I think SPO3, PLO8, there is an AMI out there for those who want to try this on AWS. And we obviously have, we have a bring your own license model. Um, and you can talk to your sales rep about that and you can also uh, try it out um, with community support. So if you bring your own license, you have full support as well. We've also added things. So we, we added what's called an in-memory row store. So the ability to um, tie a table, not say what, uh, how many or how large it is, but actually utilize in-memory row store with model version uh, uh, MVCC capabilities, just like HANA, so that I can bring a table off disk, put it in memory, but we'll take care and under the covers ensure that it's ACID compliant, but we can improve your scalability and performance of your transactional processing. Okay, with things like table pre-caching, cache warming as well, so that you don't start with a cold cache when you restart the ASE. We're also improving things uh, like the, you know, planning, you know, enhancements, always query processing enhancements, you know, uh, things like local index support for constraints in partition tables, not just local indexes for partitions. Um, and as always, making sure that as new operating systems come out, new versions come out, maybe Red Hat 9, maybe SUSE 16 as they come out, will we be doing that? We're also going to upgrade things like our compilers to ensure that we're at the latest and greatest compilers because we are aware things like, you know, uh, Microsoft runtimes uh, are getting aged out and stuff like that th uh, this year. Um, and going forward, as always, you know, more query processing enhancements, enhancements to SAP Business Suite, um, work as a managed service within the cloud environment. So the HANA Enterprise Cloud, the SAP Cloud Platforms, as well as we are also engineering, and it's a separate discussion, a separate presentation on an actual HANA Cl ASC Cloud Service. So right now, ASC can be deployed in the cloud as in, in a, under an infrastructure as a service, you know, virtual machine environment. Going forward, we will allow you to turn on a service, say we want to use the ASC as a service and be able to directly connect to it, not through HANA. It will be a separately available service. And that's, uh, that's a discussion for, for another presentation. Okay. And as always, you know, we're going to continue with XLTP. We're working on connection pooling for drivers for Perl and Python. We're adding PHP 7 support going forward. Um, we're also working on uh, .NET uh, um, uh, core and uh, EF framework enhancements as well. So they're not on the roadmap right now, but I am very well aware and I've been pushing a lot of that, making sure that those are going to be included in the future releases. So next slide, please. On the, uh, this is a separate slide because one of the biggest capabilities of ASC uh, in recent years has been this ability to develop always on an, uh, what's called high availability disaster recovery or HADR. 
And the idea here is to ensure that it works within a cloud environment, which it absolutely does. Uh, we, we have our cloud platform environment is using it right now for, for hundreds of ASE instances uh, running business suite and custom applications. We want to ensure that SSL is supported for all components right through from the ASC through the rep servers uh, to the companion ASC. We want to support uh, third party reporting or th our third node for reporting. So not just disaster uh, recovery, uh, third node capabilities straight off the, uh, straight off the cluster. We want to be able to support you being able to send it out to a replication environment that's external. So essentially think of an HADR cluster um, of the companion and um, uh, and uh, the primary and companion, sorry, as a standalone ASC. It's essentially you want to be able to take out your standalone ASC and put in this cluster for on-site availability within your data center. Okay, hot standby and then still add it to your existing replication environment. So you don't have to know replication to be able to do any of this, okay? You can actually plug and play. And we're, we've added things like SQL statement replication, so dynamic SQL for third-party applications, not just support for business suite, but third-party, your own custom applications can be um, supported by uh, you know, taking out an ASE and putting in an HADR cluster. Okay, and as I said, one of the upcoming en uh, enhancements is the ability to um, uh, make sure that cluster supports XA transactions as well. Okay, within the rep server involved in the high availability to disaster recovery, but basically rep server itself, we have things like smart memory control. We have increased parallelism and pipelining we've added to improve the performance and throughput of the, a of the, the replication environments so that more databases in that ASC primary can be supported by the single replication server. We've also added things like uh, what's called CI mode. Some of you may be uh, aware of that, and I'll, I'll cover that in the third uh, uh, column here in a second. So we're gonna add always on support, this HADR support for more environments. Right now, it is still limited to, it has to be the same environment, Solaris, Solaris, uh, Linux, Linux, AIX, AIX. So we want to ensure that it's extended to all our supported environments so that, um, we can support that capability regardless of what the environment is. Um, we we're, we're want to make sure that in the case of a DR cluster where or or where it's 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 HA, but you've got your dark farb, you've got it, you know, a little bit more distance, be, you know, maybe more across the street or 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 across the town, versus within the data center. We want to make sure that failover and failback happens within your environment faster in a metro cluster environment. Okay, and as we've said, one of the planned innovations coming out for SPO4 um, is, is that. As far as product direction goes, we are definitely wanting to always, always, always make this easier to use. So HADR, right now you communicate with one component. He talks to other components like the rep management agents. There, there's, a, there's several other components that come with the HADR. So there's a rep management agents, there's a fault manager, there's the SAP host agent, which is part of every SAP system. So you talk to the fault manager and issue the commands and it will issue the commands to the other. So it's a simple command that takes care of the failover and failback, not like it is right now with things like uh, uh, warm standby, uh, those of you familiar with the replication environment. Um, where as we said, we're going to do things like encrypt the queues. Um, we're gonna make sure that uh, those of you familiar with replication technology, you know you can already talk to the database in the replicated environment, but you have to make sure you don't talk to the transaction log or, or insert anything in the transaction log. We want to ensure that in an SAP definition of read-only, read-only is supported where you may also have to have a table that is a working table has to be in that database. So you've made changes to the transaction log. Maybe I want to exclude that database or that table from the overall database replication of, of HADR. So we're adding that and we have that support. And one of the biggest things we're looking at is right now replication technology uses LTL, um, uh, uh, capability. So the rep agent writes a, an agnostic SQL. We have what's called CI mode, which gets the data out of the transaction log faster, but means the replication server has to make that LTL if it's going to send to an external environment. But it means you now have the ability for hot standby. So the, as we go back to the left column and we say increased parallelism, that's one of the reasons is that we want to make sure that the replication server is running as fast as possible because now that log page is shipped. 
That means, though, that if you're shipping it from one chip type, like uh, you know an Intel chip, it has to be the same Intel chip that processes it in the replication server. So we're going to support things like cross-Andean support, where the big Andean and little Andean don't matter, because we're still taking that log image to the rep server and letting it process it now. Okay, but that's what makes it hot standby. Next slide, please. So let's continue on with replication server. So next slide, please. And what replication server you're already familiar with has that capability to take a primary database and move it across to um, targets that are third party things like, like maybe, you know, if you have the third party options with adaptive server platform edition, you can move things like uh, to an Oracle or to Microsoft, you capture from Oracle or Microsoft. But maybe our target is just straight ASC, AHANA, IQ, something like that, or something where we take it into data services and change data capture, either way, or into a messaging environment. Uh, either way, it's, it, the idea is it's non-obtrusive replication from a primary through a replication engine into a target. As we've said, a lot of the capabilities uh, are optimized for now to work with business suite, but we know it's already worked for many years with third-party applications. So we just want to be able to take data from the log, move it through with low latency to the transaction, uh, your destination, take it in a transactional manner, and ensure that it is always consistent. We only take committed transactions, okay? And we want to move stuff into perhaps a decision support system, as we said, a, a disaster recovery system, or in the case of HADR, we just want to get it to that companion as fast as possible so that if a failover occurs, you have your hot transactions, everything's already there. Okay, next slide, please. So what we want to do is meet the rec market requirements for the replication of ASC to or from any other supported databases, you know, IQ, HANA, whatever, so SAP database, as well as some third party databases. We always want to ensure that we are only committing, taking committed transactions and it's, so it's reliable and it's, the performance can be monitored, tuned or as necessary. And we want to be able to, to, to move stuff. And so as part of our move to the cloud, we're also gonna include replication technology into the cloud as a service as well. And again, that's a separate uh, discussion that we'll be having. And we want to ensure that the, the, the three primary goals of replication are still met. So things like high availability and disaster recovery, um, the ability to, to replicate to a, a reporting system in real time, not batch. So your reporting system is up to date and live. Okay, not batch cycles at night, but as you hit transactions the database, it can be sent to a reporting system. And also data distribution. So data is uh, resident at the point of action instead of you having to reach across the world to find your data, it's there. And so the notion of ownership can be maintained so that, uh, for example, in, a, in a, uh, a distributed environment, your local transactions go to your local database, but they're available to be read at least at, at, at other locations instead of it being federated or reached across uh, the network. Next, uh, next slide, please. So as we said, data movement, we want to keep that high performance uh, reliable. We want to make sure we capture it from the source without having to apply, uh, have that source fire triggers or in other ways be affected at all in terms of the load that the replication will place on it. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about batch cycles to extract things or triggers to move things. We want to ensure things get moved across for zero data loss. So in the case of HADR, we ensure that you cannot, you, if the, your last transaction hasn't been committed, then it won't be found in the companion at all. But when it is committed, that commit will ensure it's also in the replication server's inbound queue at that moment. They are, it's, a, it's a synchronous commit, can be defined in an HA environment. Disaster recovery, there may be some asynchronous aspects, but in a true HA environment, we wanna make sure that the transaction is hot. It's out of my primary in the replication server to be directed to the secondary when I issue that commit. Okay, or directed to the companion, sorry. Okay. So in terms of that, we want to ensure that, you know, we, it, it, it is still the highest performance capability of moving data across for you. We want to ensure that it can move things across, um, you know, geographical boundaries, business boundaries, di data, different database types, et cetera, and ensure that it's transactionally consistent 
uh, and therefore the data is consistent. We want to make sure that it, the, the data is available for access. So in an HADR environment, it's still there. Your system's up and running and away, to go, uh, away you go still, and you don't experience any form of recovery point or recovery time issues. Okay, so we want to make sure we enable your business continuity, we enable insights through decision support systems, etc. And the direction is to we, we, we support SAP to SAP targets. And with adaptive server platform edition, we support things like ASE to other targets, other targets to ASE, and uh, other targets to things like IQ. Those are some of the directions we want to run, run to as well as uh, take from. Okay, next slide, please. So as far as the, the roadmap goes, again, it's released in concert with ASE. So the service pack and patch level identifiers are identical. Okay, there's no, it's been a long time, but we do not release things uh, off type because we may be wanting to introduce a feature that has to be in both ASE and replication at the same time. Okay. So things like, you know, the in-memory row store, we want to make sure the in-memory row store was supported by replication technology because it's got its own transaction log as well. So the, rep the replication has to be familiar, not just with the primary transaction log, but the in-memory row store transaction log to ensure asset compliance, as well as that transaction before it gets persisted to disk still is available to replication to be taken out of. Um, so we also support things like the data row caching capabilities and as I said, the MVCC. The canonical interface, the CI mode replication, as we said, the, that gets the data out of the uh, primary ASC. And once we support cross endian CI mode, we can consider, it's not there yet, it's not on the roadmap, deprecating LTL uh, completely because there's no need for it if we can move stuff out faster. We don't have to make that translation by the rep agent, we can do it by the rep server instead and make the rep agent much faster as well, pulling stuff out. As we said, you know, things like dynamic SQL, SQL DML support. As we said, you know, and the, some of this goes back to the HADR uh, uh, roadmap as well, because it's it's part and parcel of it. You know, the ability to do end-to-end -end security, uh, cloud availability, and the ability to put it in an IaaS environment, as well as our future cloud service, native cloud service. So we're always going to be supporting ASE new features. If we introduce a new feature, we want it part of the replication right away, so you can utilize it. Um, we also want to make sure it supports um, environments so that if you have an environment that's not HADR, but you still want to utilize an ASC feature like the IMRS, the in-memory row store, the data row caching, um, you want to utilize those features. It's not an either or, it's part and parcel of that ability that you want to be able to move the data um, however you want to make your application perform, rep server will support it, okay? So we want to make sure that takes it all the way through, all right? We've, we've added some support already, I think, for things like um, uh, the, the, the CI mode doesn't use an inbound queue uh, or it uses a, a special inbound queue, but it also, because it can connect or HADR can connect to an external replication system, that external replication system actually connects to the replication server of the HADR cluster. It utilizes what's called the simple persistent queue, which is actually what contains the transactions that have to go elsewhere from our HADR system. So we want to ensure that that doesn't get full. So we've added capabilities already for that. As far as the cloud goes, we want to support replication in the cloud and make sure that we add, um, there, there's notes still coming out and in, in the works to do things like, you know, how do you tune a rep server for AWS, Azure, GCP, et cetera. Okay, so those notes are still in the works to come out. So do additional documentation, not just in the base documentation, but you know, experiences and things from support, you know, uh, KBAs as well as SAP notes. Okay, and as always, we're making sure that we add certifications for things like MSSQL 2019, um, um, Oracle 19. We're working on uh, those sort of things. You know, extreme support has already been in the rep server for a while. Actually, the rep agent, um, stuff like that. And that is, as we said, as we go forward, always, always, always new features for ASC, um, the ability to add more CI mode uh, capabilities and make sure that we can support more than just SQL DML, but you know, you know, everything out there that you might use in your uh, uh, third party environment, we wanna make sure that's part of the replication support with CI mode, because someday we will eliminate uh, LTL, but as I said, that's not in there just yet. So, okay. so. 
you know, we're, we're, we're working, you know, uh, additional capabilities to move from each, you know, when it's involved in an HADR environment to make sure that it can send stuff out to a replication environment uh, more simply. Um, that replication environment right now is looking for LTL, maybe an external replication environment will all be CI mode someday. So we want to make sure that SPQ knows that it's now going out as a, as a CI mode uh, versus an LTL capability. Okay, as always, working on things like, uh, you know, security, security, security. That's almost SAP's uh, primary goal is making sure security is out there. No password, uh, plain text for things, encryption for data queues. You know, certificate refreshes without restarting. That's a big one for HADR environments, and we want to make sure that works within a, a, a replication environment where we have the certificates that support the encryption for the SSL, et cetera, like that. Next slide, please. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to hand over to uh, Rob Waywell on the IQ uh, roadmap. Rob? Thanks, Chris. Hi, folks, and thanks for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, John did a quick introduction for me when we started. Just expand a bit on that. Um, like Chris, I'm one of the part of the HANA product management team, HANA being the SAP's database portfolio. And all of the Sybase databases are now fully included in the HANA database portfolio. So for IQ, um, I'm not just responsible for on-premise IQ, although that's obviously a very important part of that portfolio, but I'm also responsible for the other ways in which we integrate IQ. I'm just trying to do a page down here. Uh, and I think I'm having the same, there we go. Um, other ways that we integrate IQ throughout the HANA portfolio. Whoops. Now we've gone too far. Trying to get back up. John, I guess you might have to just keep uh, driving here. So if you can go up to the roadmap slide for IQ for me, that'd be great. All right, one down from there. Thank you, perfect. Oops. <laughs> there we go, okay. I'm gonna try and not touch my screen while I talk here. Okay, so uh, one thing you'll note, if you look at the column headings here, uh, I'm we're talking on a little bit different timeline for IQ over the next couple of years than ASE. So IQ is very much a strategic product for SAP uh, on premise and in the cloud. So last year we released the SPO4 release of IQ 16.1. And if you look at the recent innovations column, you know, there's a number of things people already know about IQ, right? Is we are a proven multi petabyte structured data warehouse. Uh, Largest customer I've personally been involved in, it's uh, 45 petabytes of raw data compressed to about four and a half petabytes of, of data once ingested into IQ, all right? So strengths there are our compression, our indexing, and our you know query processing, our ability to handle ad hoc workloads with IQ. A lot of our focus in recent years, including the SPO4 release, has been in the area of extreme scale. So in SPO4, we enhanced our support for distributed file systems like GPFS, right, which lets us handle larger files. We uh, extended our capabilities to do asynchronous I.O. Uh, with the Prefetch Manager. That improves uh, performance for the database because we're, we're not synchronously tied to I.O. requests. We added the ability to export data, so do an export in a zipped format. So you're not getting a fully flat file, but you are getting some compression benefits even when unloading data. Uh, made some significant performance improvements to DBCC, and that works actually ongoing. There's more we can do there. As always, we did work to improve query performance. Uh, we added support for user-defined mutexes and semaphores. And also in the interest of keeping up with the formats in which data comes to us is we added the ability to load data into IQ from Apache Parquet files, right? And as some people might know, uh, probably know, 
Parquet itself is a column oriented file format. But something to keep in mind is that while data within a Parquet file is column oriented, it's stored in a column oriented manner within the file, that's still not across files, right? So even if you do have raw data in, in Parquet and you were maybe thinking of, of some other technology other than IQ, ingesting that data into IQ is gonna give you further performance and compression benefits. From a data center, data center operations standpoint, so from a min backup and recovery, we uh, implemented point in time recovery. So now you have the option of actually picking a timestamp to recover back to. Now I will note that this is a very, it's a very verbose load on the logging requirements, on the backup requirements. So we do have to um, keep a lot of detail in order to be able to support point in time recovery. But if that is a business requirement for you, it is supported. And then we added uh, integrated or support for integrated storage replication solutions, right? So in many cases, when you're dealing with the volumes of data that IQ has, being able to do the doing backups or at a storage level, you know, taking advantage of some hardware uh, optimizations there can be, you know, a really good performance approach. So the other things that are recent that I do want to touch on, I know we're talking primarily to people using IQ directly here, but these are potent both in terms of forward direction, forward roadmap and opportunity, and also in terms of emphasizing just how critical IQ is in the, the HANA database ecosystem. All right. So first one I've got listed there under SAP ecosystem integration is the SAP HANA Cloud data lake. So HANA Cloud is our premier um, native cloud implementation of our database technologies. And Chris mentioned the XO LTP initiative um, for ASE. That will become part of HANA Cloud, right? Where you can stand up full ASE instances, use them as ASE in HANA Cloud. With IQ, we're a bit further ahead on that. So when HANA Cloud was announced uh, last year, it was announced at uh, the SAP Sapphire conference, conference by chairman of the board and one of the founders, Hasso Plattner. Um, he introduced HANA Cloud then is when it was announced. And key part of HANA Cloud is the data lake, which right there on the slides at Sapphire, um, Hasso quite clearly stated, and this is SAP IQ. All right. So HANA Cloud was released at the end of March um, and data lake is available as part of HANA Cloud today. Now, the implementation of Data Lake as it is right now is not ready for full existing IQ applications to migrate to the cloud, all right? It is an IQ engine. It uh, has elastic scalability, so you can scale up and down. It's a multiplex implementation, but your connections with the Data Lake today are still going through a HANA instance, similar to what we did with HANA Dynamic Tiering. Right? Over the next year, and there's some more details I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about, but over the next year leading up to uh, Q1 2021, we will be adding features and exposing more native IQ features in the uh, SAP HANA Cloud data lake. All right. The other feature to mention here is uh, dynamic tiering is IQ integrated into an SAP HANA system. So running as a node within a HANA system. One piece of one feature there that had been a blocking one for a long time was the fact that the, the Sybase databases traditionally supported six digit precision on a timestamp. Right? HANA, being a newer database, had said they can do better than that and had implemented a seven digit precision timestamp. So that was a functional gap for us between Dynamic Terrain or IQ and HANA. That was closed with the SPO4 release last year. All right, so there is a seven digit timestamp if you want to use it. And if you are looking to use IQ as a sidecar along with other with HANA in memory database, then that can be a particular feature you wanna look at. We've also done work um, for optimizing the uh, virtualization or federation between IQ and HANA. And that's where the asynchronous table replicas came in, letting us synchronized data from HANA into the IQ system be used directly in queries there. So we could push down larger pieces of queries or larger queries directly to IQ. Okay, so that's the history part. Focusing on what's planned. 
So the next SP for on-premise IQ, uh, we're targeting Q2 2021 for that. Uh, and again, the data lake, um, we're looking at a Hana Cloud data lake release in Q1 2021 that will be able to support uh, full or migration of existing IQ on-premise applications to the cloud if desired. So some of the things we're specifically looking at for the on-premise IQ SP next year is first off is object level backup and restore. What this means is the ability to backup and restore individual tables, right? So, uh, and that's a feature request we've had for many customers over the years, including some I talk to regularly. So that's, uh, will be coming in the SP release in Q2 next year. Uh, performance improvements, more performance improvements for uh, DBCC for consistency checking. Specifically what we're doing there is that it was flat FP indexes. We're not prefetching yet when we're running DBCC. So we will be implementing prefetch for flat FP index types, index structures uh, for DBCC, which if you have those index types in your IQ system, will significantly improve the, improve the throughput and performance of DBCC. For improved corrupt page handling, basically what we're doing there is we're implementing a quarantine process for corrupt pages. So there's a scenario where one type of corruption can end up with two tables both claiming ownership of the same page. And the quarantine process will both uh, prevent the, that page from being reallocated onto the free list, um, but it'll also prevent the corruption from getting any worse. All right. So that's a specific, uh, you know, improvement towards uh, corruption handling. And then the last one there is actually a really cool one. So enhanced or improved trace features that are going to let us provide, are going to provide us with a replay functionality. So this won't actually be an operational uh, replay. It'll actually be um, capturing the stack. But if you have something that you can reproduce, an issue, for example, you can reproduce in your environment, you'll be able to uh, enable this tracing, hand us the replay, and we'll be able to walk through it without having access to your data at all. All right, there may be some potential to also use this replay capability for you know, QA or performance testing, but primary focus on that one is being able to support uh, improved troubleshooting, right? So some other things, as I mentioned, is just in terms of ecosystem integration, a couple small things going on for dynamic tiering. So we are still making enhancements there, improvements there. But more importantly, um, if you are looking to potentially move your I, an IQ system to the cloud or to an extend your use of IQ to the cloud, then Q1 2021, we will be ready to support migration of existing on-premise IQ applications to the cloud. And just spending about a minute on product direction. Uh, so these are things that we're working on. Can't commit to them being in the 2021 release, but are definitely things that we think are important. Uh, so always continue to improve performance and diagnostics. Um, you know, always continue to improve supportability. But one of the things we're working on is increasing the maximum database file size limit. So this is not DB space limit. It's not the size of your your IQ database, right? IQ supports petabyte scale databases today, but increasing the size of an individual DB file within a DB space. So currently there's a four terabyte limit on that. With the right file system, we can increase that up to hundred terabytes and that's something that's work in progress. Another thing we're looking to do um, and inherit this from our cloud work is automatic load balancing. So not just around Robin type load balancing, but when a query comes in, being able to actually assign that query to the node of a multiplex system that's best in the best situation to handle it uh, most efficiently right now. And that, that can be really powerful once we get that. Other things, data center operations, there's two things we're working on here that um, I expect to be, there's a good chance they could come in uh, sometime in 2021, but probably not make that SP release. Uh, first is read access to data during DDL changes, all right? So this would require a multiplex system where we'd be looking at doing sort of a rolling upgrade of nodes within the multiplex system. 
but allowing, um, so doing basically upgrading one node at a time, and, but allowing continued read access to the remaining nodes as each individual node is being updated, all right? Um, it's another thing that we're looking to inherit uh, from our cloud enhancements that we're working on, but uh, would be, you know, really, re that, that's another customer driven request. The second one here is transactional DDL. And this is the ability to execute a set of DDL statements within a transaction. So again, it relates, I think, most directly to upgrade scenarios where you want an upgrade to succeed as, a, as an atomic operation. Normally, today, DDL operations, each DDL statement's an atomic one. Be able to group a set of DDL statements as a transaction and be able to have them succeed or fail as a group is, again, a customer-driven enhancement that uh, we're actively talking about the architecture and how to implement that. So I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to hand it back to, I think it's going, is it going to Ed at this point? Uh, yep, thank you very much, uh, Robert. Appreciate that. Let me just take control here. Okay, great. So that's really great information from Chris and Robert. Um, really fantastic information and great to see that SAP is fully supporting ASC and replication server and IQ going forward. Um, you know, Chris mentioned the uh, SPO3 PLO9 coming out. We're excited to see that uh, because uh, among many other things, uh, it's gonna have a fix apparently for um, a stack trace in SP show plan. Uh, that we're very interested in. So there's a lot of great things coming up on the ASC side and uh, as well as the replication and IQ server. Uh, we're going to briefly talk about Bradmark surveillance and then we'll go into Q&A. Uh, if you saw our, our previous uh, part in the web series, so we talked about some of the benefits that Bradmark surveillance has, because we do support the SAP products in a very first class manner. We typically roll out new features on the SAP products first. Uh, just generally speaking, of course, we have web monitoring for on-premises cloud and container databases. We have historical metrics for uh, the SAP products for all, from ASC to rep server to IQ. We have a lot of reports uh, for compliance that we've been adding recently, and we have a lot of in-depth analysis that we do with this product as well. This is an example of the kinds of things that we're doing uh, in the ASC realm. For example, this is an uh, a, um, auditing uh, report that we can generate from ASC. Uh, as, as typical of the kinds of things that we're doing, you know, a lot of the notable features that we're that we're looking that we do for all of the products are things like what we call time slicing or recent history, where we can go back in time and take a look at okay, what's the top SQL for this ASC or for this IQ over the last hour or maybe last week, this time period or a few weeks ago. Uh, easily can see that through the Bradmark surveillance product uh, to analyze what's going on in the AAC or the IQ or the rep server. Uh, we also have our flashback capability, which lets you go back in time to a particular point in time. So just as if you're monitoring real time, you can easily see what it was like at three o'clock yesterday or three o'clock last week at this time. We also have various different types of reports, and we've also done a lot with alerts as well. So if you um, uh, need the ability to see the uh, what's going on with the different servers, the databases, and see the red, yellow, green kind of stuff, that's what we provide in the surveillance product. We have a very distributed system for monitoring environments, and we have uptime reports and those kinds of things. So, and this is the, the alerts dashboard kind of thing that we can provide in the Bradmark surveillance product for SAP and for other databases as well. Um, with with the product, of course, one of the things that we can do is investigate problems, and we've done a lot of things um, in the last uh, last few releases to help you see more. In the ASC, uh, what you're looking at here is that we've looked at the top SQL for a particular time period, and we're drilling down to see what is what is that particular query plan. And so you can see here we have the full SP show plan output for that query during that time period. And those are the kinds of things that we like to provide for in terms of historical information for ASC and for IQ. In IQ, you can actually see the full query plan, uh, the HTML query plans. So if you're currently generating uh, those HTML plans, we can easily see that historically with the Breadmark surveillance product. We can also take a look at the top SQL by hour. 
we also have flashback capability and things like that. And I'll just go ahead and skip a couple of these things, but I would like to mention some of the specific things that we have for each of these different SAP products. We have, for example, for ASC, we can do transaction log analysis where we can see what was the biggest uh, transaction that happened. Uh, we can look at index statistics and we can also look at spin lock monitoring to see what's maybe a bottleneck in terms of spin locks, so, uh, especially in the 15.7 line. Uh, spin locks were, there were a lot of bottlenecks there. 16 is a little bit less, but it's still an issue in, in some environments. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip some of these screens here. You can see this in the uh, presentation materials that we send out after the uh, webinar. On the IQ side, as I mentioned, we have historical query plans, so we can see the full HTML output for uh, historical uh, SQL. We can take a look at column and table usage. We actually do this uh, by parsing SQL and doing things like that. And of course, we have overall health of the IQ system as well as the multiplexes if you have that deployed. On the rep server side, we have replicate uh, activity. So we can see latency and throughput on the rep server, which is pretty exciting to, to be able to see if there's any bottleneck going on with the replication. Overall health and all the different types of components from the RSI to DSI, uh, those kinds of things as well as exception management. You can easily see what exceptions have been generated and see the full text and SQL and things like that. Uh, this is uh, one example of the latency. You can see we have we latency and we have bandwidth being shown as well as the last time the ticket was seen in this particular uh, replication path. And we also have overall health. We have the different areas like rep agent, SQM, SQT, those kinds of things, partition space, and of course, suspect threads. So a little bit about the surveillance roadmap, since this is kind of a roadmap presentation. Uh, we have a maintenance release coming out with our 4.7.3, which, uh, you know, for the SAP products in particular, the things to, to notice on here are that we have uptime SLA reports available now for the databases and for the server. So it's a great way of seeing what the, uh, the, the availability of your different instances are. We also have um, uh, some improvements to the web client, and also we've done a lot to improve the uh, way that we handle errors when we collect information as well. So for existing users, this is a really great improvement release going on. Uh, in terms of releases coming up, uh, we have our 4.8 product, which is going to include a new product for PostgreSQL. But for the SAP side, we're really adding additional items to see more information on that historical information. So earlier we saw that there's a query plan available for that. We can also take a look at SPIDs and that kind of stuff right now. We're adding more information to be able to investigate further because a lot of our customers are investigating historical information on, uh, on, the, on the ASC or in the IQ, and we're providing more so you can drill down and see more information and, and really track down which application is causing the issue, which logins are causing the issue, those kinds of things. As well as we're also trying to provide more comparison graphs. So if you want to take a look, for example, if your store procedures are taking longer now, how was it running a week ago or a few weeks ago? Those kinds of comparisons or a replication latency, for example, those kind of comparison graphs are things that we're also adding into the product. So it's a really exciting amount of uh, features that we're adding to help diagnose historical issues, uh, post-mortem analysis faster. In our 4.1 product, we have new products for MongoDB and Neo4j coming out, as well as 64-bit on Windows. And then we also have our 4.2 product, which will introduce a HTML5 client, um, a new, new product, which I can't uh, mention the name of at the moment, as well as we're going to be doing store compression, which will provide more of the recent history in a smaller amount of space. Uh, so that's pretty exciting as well. Going forward, we're looking to do more things with self-service deployments, um, easier uh, deployment and integration of on-premises versus cloud. Right now we can already do that, but we're making it even easier in the future. We're trying to integrate more event uh, action types into the alerting system, especially with third-party services, um, you know, things like Twilio and things like that. And also we're trying to do more reporting that is more role specific, as well as uh, trying to integrate some machine learning items into the alerting aspects as well. Uh, you can try out Bradmark uh, surveillance yourself at our demo site at demo.bradmark.com, colon 12411. Um, there's some information here about when we have some activity and other things like that. This is actually hosted on AWS, and if you're interested in the details of how that's set up, you definitely want to join us for part three of this webinar series where we're going to be talking about uh, AWS, SAP products on AWS, and Bradmark surveillance on AWS as well, and uh, as well as other cloud platforms. So, and this is kind of what it looks like. You can see we have a couple of demo servers set up and you can go back, you can go back in time and do the recent history and all that great stuff uh, fully available on the demo site. So now we're gonna go into question Q&A. Uh, we're running a little bit long, so we're gonna focus a little bit more on the roadmap related items in the question and answer. Um, 
first we'd like to talk uh, one question that came up about, uh, I guess this is for Chris. Uh, you talked about eliminating LTL for ASC. Uh, uh, how do you, uh, are you, are you doing that only for ASC or are you proposing another way to support non-ASC primaries? So at the current moment in time, uh, eliminating LTL is on the roadmap, but CI mode is what's required for HADR. And uh, we haven't set a timeline for any possible elimination of LTLs for uh, regular replication. So, however, you can use CI mode for regular replication, which is why we've enhanced it for things like uh, SQL DML and third party capabilities. But uh, so that is an option. But at the current moment in time, uh, LTL is still probably the mode of choice if you're going across uh, different architectures. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Um, there, uh, there's a question about um, this direction support for ECDA. Um, it's currently on an old version. Are there any thoughts to or plans to retire ECDA or integrate it into Rep Server like As ECO and ECH? Uh, right now, uh, the third-party replication environments, uh, heterogeneous replication for Microsoft SQL and DB2 support have an ECA, ECDA component in there, so it is supported as long as those, uh, 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 those uh, capabilities are part of the product, it will be supported through that, uh, that product. Um, ECO is what's used in the Oracle replication, the replication to Oracle, so ECDA is not part of that. But if you have the option for Microsoft or DB2 replication, ECDA will be available and supported, but it is not a separate product on the price book uh, under SAP, as far as I know, at the current moment in time. Okay, great. Um, also, um, in another, also, in terms of roadmaps, um, are there, is, is there anything you can say about the roadmap for the SDK? The SDK is still fully developed and supported. Uh, as I said, uh, we're adding support for PHP 7 in an upcoming release, probably SPO 4, post SPO 4, uh, PL 1 or something like that. Um, we're looking at uh, .NET Core and EF Core um, uh, capabilities in the driver. So SDKs are fully supported and they're the same version level as uh, ASC Rep Server and uh, Open Server. So uh, it is part and parcel of the environment. Uh, we can't do the product without the SDK. So um, okay. SDK will have the same end of mainstream maintenance as ASC 16 does uh, at the current moment in time, which is December 31st, 2025. And uh, it'll have a successor product to it uh, when one arrives, which will be okay. an SDK 16.1 or whatever we call it at the time. Okay, great. I guess this is for uh, everybody. Um, are there any plans to merge ASD and IQ products? Uh, I think the issue is, the question is whether there's going to be a product that has column store and row stores in the same database. At the current moment in time, that's a HANA capability, but I, I'll leave Rob to answer that. We're on the same way there, Chris. So it is an interesting question. Um, HANA does provide both a row engine and a column store engine um, in the single database today. What I think I'd highlight there is the emphasis on the word engine, right? So while they're both in the same database, it does take two different engines. There's complex logic, and it's not just a matter of combining result sets at the end, um, required to manage a row store versus managing a column store. So while I'd say there's a benefit, there are some benefits to having a single database, physical database that has both in it, um, you can, you're not going to be far off, I don't think, using the data federation between ASC and IQ. Um, and, and, but it is an interesting question and um, one that uh, I can certainly take back and talk about at this side. But most likely the answer you will get back from SAP is that, uh, that HANA gives you that option today. Yeah, and, and one of the other things in, in, in uh, from my previous, wearing one of my previous hats is, um, ASC is entered to be engineered to be a high performance transactional processing. IQ is engineered to be an analytical um, and, and decision support system. Trying to have both do the same job as, as you know, we, we've always really tried to direct the products to, to have it do the job, the primary job that is, is its design goal. So combining the two would basically have it uh, maybe not be good at either. So right now, both ASC and IQ are engineered to be specific for specific purposes instead of uh, being a single 
environment. HANA was completely engineered from the ground up to be a different engine. And so, and in one of my previous hats, I, I've worked with HANA as an, as an OLTP engine as well in a column store. So less row stores even needed. So it really depends on why that is a requirement versus uh, separating the, 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 re the purposes. Okay. Uh, another question came in. Uh, data assurance is a key component of SRS. Uh, can you speak to the uh, roadmap in terms of how da DA is going to be going forward with SRS and the uh, feature set going forward? Well, I'm looking at, uh, as the product manager, I'm looking at making sure that data assurance uh, has, is a, has a go forward uh, direction, especially with our move into the cloud where we want to be able to com confirm that what you have in uh, in your on-prem is exactly the same as what's in um, the uh, you know uh, a cloud service environment. So your data is identical. So we need a tool like Data Assurance to make sure that is possible, whether it's Data Assurance itself or whether it's a uh, a follow-on tool um, is yet to be seen. And uh, I can't mention that at the current time. Yeah, I understand. Um, a question from several people are they're asking uh, for, on AC cockpit, is that uh, plan to going away from flash into HTML5 or Fiori? We're working on a replacement tool at the current moment in time. We are well aware of the deadline and we hope to release a tool by the end of the year with SPO4's release to, uh, to replace it. At the current moment in time, we're working on documentation enhancements to ensure that every single screen available in Cockpit is currently documented and the SQL that generates that will be provided. And just like Cockpit evolved over time, the replacement and the uh, follow-on capabilities will evolve over time. We just right now want to in ensure we address the end of life for Flash. Uh, what I can say is the cockpit engine that gathers uh, alerts and data will remain at the current moment in time. That's the current plan. But the, uh, we're essentially going to have to turn off Flash, but provide the, uh, the full documentation and then add it back into a replacement tool, which will be Fiori-based is the current uh, uh, prototypes that I've reviewed. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, we understand too. Uh, in terms of the Bradmark surveillance product, we're also migrating to HTML5, and as we meant, saw earlier in the 5.2 release coming up. So uh, definitely, we're all uh, hitting up against that uh, the deadline this year. Um, another question is: Do you uh, intend to maintain and support the RTDS module? RTDS. Um... We have the real-time messaging edition capabilities, and that's we've just released an SAP note to support that. Real-time data services itself, um, that is, let me just think, because there's a two, the real-time messaging edition is different from real-time data services, sorry. Um, Real-time messaging edition, which is the uh, ability to use replication uh, out to a message bus, like a JMS message bus, um, is not EOMM at the current moment in time. We've just released an SAP note on its uh, support. Um, and real-time data services, I believe, has already been uh, uh, end of mainstream maintenance. Okay, um, uh, I guess um, on the IQ side, um, is there a, is there an idea about when um, IQ might go to, to version 17 or uh, something a little bit further along in the 16.1? Okay, so we have already decided that the release that we're planning for next year for on-premise IQ will be a 16.1 SP, all right? So okay. Uh, there are releases planned. Um, the labeling is not expected to change. Is, we're not going to be changing the labeling to make it a different major version next year. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I think we're. I think we've covered most of the QA here. Um, and people, everybody listening, uh, you know, if there's additional questions we haven't covered, you're certainly welcome to submit it to Redmark, and we can uh, try to get those questions answered uh, offline as well. So, John, I hand it back to you. Absolutely. Uh, Ed, thank you so, so much. And for Chris and Robert, thank you so much for your valuable information. A lot of information to cover, a lot of content. 
uh, that uh, we will be able to pass along uh, not only through uh, copies of this uh, presentation, but through the uh, uh, repeat uh, replay that will be available later this week. So I'll, I'll, remember, I'll remind you guys to mark your calendars for next month. Uh, we will have Peter Tholley with us, uh, a longtime Sybay Sky, uh, SAP guy, uh, you know, just a surveillance guy. He's, he's, he's been a great supporter of ours for many, many years, and he'll be at AWS uh, speaking of uh, on work on, on uh, ASC workloads in the cloud. So with that, I'll go ahead and say thanks again for uh, your support. Uh, SAP, obviously, our support with uh, ISUG Tech uh, they, in, in helping us promote and continuing their, their uh, work over there. Um, I, I wish everybody a good day and continue to be safe. Take care and uh, have a nice day.